This is episode 200 of the Wildlife Photography Podcast. In this episode, wildlife photography and social media. Hey everybody, my name is Jerry, I'm from WildEye, and I cannot believe it's been 200 episodes. It, it literally felt like yesterday when I started this whole thing. And from the comments and stuff that you've sent, it sounds like you guys enjoy it. I'm loving this. It's a great way for me to kind of share, add value, but also kind of clean what's up in here, which is great. Now, this one's been a long time coming. As you know, every 10 episodes for the last maybe 100 has been a Q&A. So you send me your questions and I answer them on the podcast and then on a video on YouTube and on Instagram stories now. So the one thing that a lot of people have asked about is social media and wildlife photography. Now I have here in front of me a whole bunch of questions that people asked on social. This is just now. This is just when I asked for questions, right? But in the past, I think social media is kind of where we're at. It's how the world's operating right now. If you go on the internet, social media is the internet right now, yes? And everybody is on there trying to do something. They're trying to sell a print. They're trying to just share their images. They're trying to sell a safari. Whatever the case might be, people are on there. They're just there to kind of I mean, some people just follow. But the last while for me, and this has been bubbling almost six months now, the way that people use social media for me is interesting because I'm not sure most people get it. Now, I'm not saying off the bat, I'm not saying I get it. But the one thing that I find easy is creating content, telling my story, and whether that's a creative thing, whether that's just a DNA thing, it, it, was, it is what it is, right? Uh, LeBron James is naturally talented at basketball. He's good at that. Um, Ernie Els, for those of you that follow golf, naturally talented golf player, and so on and so forth. Some people are just better with this thing, right? Creating content than others. However, I do think everybody can get value from it. So in this episode, in episode 200, I thought, let me look at wildlife photography, my game, and social media, kind of a hobby and a passion of mine, and let's link it up, because I'm gonna get to your questions. I'm gonna answer these pretty directly, if you don't mind, but the other one also is, I'm going to then uh, start off by going through a little list of thoughts and ideas on social media that will hopefully add value to you and kind of kickstart this process of us leading into the questions. The idea behind this is, I think, twofold. Number one, a lot of people seem to be trying on social media. They're trying to do something with it. I think either they're not sure what they want to do, which is kind of an important thing, and on the flip side, I'm not sure they understand the platform correctly because it's different. Now, I'm gonna work through my, I just made little notes here, which I'm gonna talk through off the cuff for you and then we get to the questions. But let me ask you this to start. A lot of you guys are running photo safaris. A lot of you guys are running safaris. A lot of you people are trying to sell prints. A lot of you are trying to win competitions. A lot of you are trying to make a difference for conservation, right? But here's my problem. You are going all in, 100% in on Instagram. Think about it. What happens if Instagram disappears tomorrow? It's gone. Most of you will be gone as well because you're going all in. Now, at the end of my little list here, and I spoke to my guys in the office about this, is pillar content. Pieces of content that you own, that is yours, that you can use to produce Instagram content and Facebook content and Twitter and so on and so forth, right? But let's break this down. Instagram right now is the place where you need to be as a photographer. Now, one of the questions here somewhere was, um, how relevant is it to pro photographers? It's 100% relevant because that's where people's attention is right now. How relevant is it for someone running a conservation body? It's 100% relevant. How relevant, you get the point. It's very, very relevant. So let me talk you through kind of, and again, I'm not saying I'm an expert. I do find this easy and I find it enjoyable and I find a lot of kind of, it's a challenge to me almost to put new stuff and different stuff out. So let me talk you through kind of how we approach it, how I approach it, and let's get to some of your questions. So the first thing you need to ask yourself with social media, and let's stick to Instagram now because it's what we're discussing here, is why are you posting 
And why are you following? If you can figure that shit out and reverse engineer it back, you, you, it, it, the whole journey will be so much easier. So for example, why do I follow? I follow because my mind is overactive and I like the stimulus coming in. Now, funny enough, I don't follow that. Well, the majority of people that I follow is not wildlife or even photography based. There's everything. Entrepreneurship, fitness, Boston Terriers, dogs, I dig it. Travel, um, what else? Online coaching. Because why? Because that stimulus feeds me and on the side, it helps me to produce better content. I steal ideas from there. I DJ it out and I produce my own content. But also, I think it's a good thing to step away from your comfort zone, which is wildlife photography for most of you watching this, and experience something else. I'm trying to remember who this was, but one famous photographer once said, if you want to create, Jay Maisel, I think, street photographer, if you want to create more interesting images, be a more interesting person. And this, if you follow the right people, can help you. Um, why do I post? I post for a couple of reasons. Now, recently I said, I'm going to go offline for the weekend and just kind of zone out, right? Halfway during the weekend, I posted something on my story and two or three of you said, oh, you lied. You said you're going to be offline. Here's the thing. I post for two very distinct reasons. Number one, it's a business to me, right? Everything I post for me, Jerry, is aimed at either adding value to you from a business point of view or to get you on a safari with me or one of my guides sitting out there. Because we're damn good at it and I want to show you that. But I just don't want to show it to you online. I want to show it to you in the real world. So my goal for posting is twofold. Add value, this is the business side of it, and to try and get you on a safari one day. Hard sell online, definitely not. Here's the thing. Be the honey and let the bees come to you. Think about that. And then the second thing for me is I enjoy telling stories. I really, really do. So if I say I'm going to go offline, you will not see any business related content from me. It'll be me sharing my story if I feel the need to. So figure out for yourself, why do you follow people on Instagram? There, there's a lot of stuff going on from a mental health point of view online, especially in the fitness industry. A lot of the fitness models out there are properly fucked up. They share stuff which they know is not real, but it gets them followers and they rate themselves an influencer us normal people follow them and it's all messed up because we don't live in that reality. Actually, nobody lives in that reality. So you need to figure out who you follow and why. Why do you? Here's the thing. I was on a flight recently from Johannesburg to Cape Town, right? And we get on the plane and they say, please turn off your mobile device and so on and so forth. So I'm sitting on the aisle and across from me, there's a lady four times in a two hour flight. I checked four times. She pulled out her phone open, because I could see what she's doing, open Instagram and try to refresh. Yeah? Addicted comes to mind. But my question then is for her, which is important, and for you, why do you follow? Why do you follow me? Open your Instagram, scroll through, why do you follow each and every one of those people? If they're not adding value to you, you need to reassess that, right? Because it needs to be a good experience. You shouldn't get off Instagram and think, fuck, I can't create images that good. Or, oh man, I wish I was as skinny as this one because I'm drinking, what do they call this stuff? Detox tea or some shit. And then you can lose weight. You shouldn't get off Instagram and feel miserable. It should be a fun and inspiring thing. I believe that. But the more important for, the, for this discussion is why do you post? Why do you post your images? I know why I post mine. Why do you post yours? If you can understand your why, the how will be so much easier. That's a fact. If you know the reason that you're going to open this device, load an image, post it, add a whole bunch of hashtags and make it live, your life's going to be so much easier because if you know where you're going, it's easier to get there. Make sense? If you're just posting random shit all the time and hoping it's the spray and pray approach and hoping someone finds you to buy your print or sell your safari or whatever, you're going to be in it for a long, long time. It ain't going to work. Now, there's three things for me on social media. You need to keep it real. That is the most important thing from top to bottom. The analogy, morning Mike, the analogy is the cocktail party. Now, I've, I've said this and a lot of people out there have said this. 
if we're all at a cocktail party and we don't know each other, we're gonna first get to know each other. We're gonna have a drink. Hey, how's it going? Where are you from? I'm from Johannesburg, you're from Manhattan, that's cool. Oh, how long have you lived there? Blah, and so on and so forth. You get to know someone first. If you see someone that's interesting, whether because of the shirt they're wearing or because of the energy they're putting out or what you overhear what they're talking about, then you're gonna engage with them. Here's the thing, you're not gonna dive in immediately and say, hey, listen, bro, I love your shirt. You need to come on a safari with me. I'm gonna think that guy's a royal twat if he does that because it doesn't work in real life. Now, why do some people think they can go online and do that? You're not gonna do it. An example, so recently I posted an image from, I think it was the Masai Mara, right? And our Mara camp. And kind of saying, this is an amazing thing, I can't wait, get, get back, wait to get back there, and so on. And then you get people from Tanzania, they're big on this, and they will come in my image and in my comment stream and start saying, come on a safari with us to Tanzania, follow us and we'll send you details. Now I'm thinking, if I was at a cocktail party discussing with you, right, who's watching me, I'm discussing with you my Mara camp. Now, Tommy over there, over here, is, he has an operation in Tanzania. He butts in, stands in front of me, starts talking to you, and starts selling his safari on my feed, on my image. I'm going to fucking rip his face off because we don't do that in real life. Why would you do it on social media? You need to keep it real. Guys, social media might be mobile based. It might be a technology driven thing, but it is still human. I believe it is still human. I believe the people who are gonna win on social media is keeping it real and they staying human. So the idea, I mean, and the idea of the cocktail party and overhearing someone, hashtags is you overhearing a conversation. Now, if I overhear a conversation over there and I hear they're talking about safaris, I'm not gonna butt in and start selling my stuff off the bat because that's just a dick move, right? I'm gonna listen and engage. Oh, really? How long have you done this? What have you seen? Da, da, da. Build a rapport with someone. Engage first. Get to know them. Let them get to know you. And if you do it right, they will come to you. And that's where you're gonna win. Now, one of the things and one of the questions takes me here as well is, it's very easy online to baffle someone with bullshit. It's smoke and mirrors because unfortunately most, I'm, I'm kind of skeptical until proven otherwise, right? So whatever people see on this device, they think, holy shit, that must be real. If you then look at something that you think is real, right? You meet someone in the real world and it's not that. It's disappointing and you cannot build trust a business, a brand, a reputation on being disappointing. I've said this in the past, I'm gonna say it again. The best compliment I've ever received was on the beginning of a safari when two clients, Corin and Tristan, got off the plane, 2014 somewhere, and all of this stuff was just happening. Periscope was still going, Instagram was just, I think, starting then. Within five minutes of me meeting them for the first time in real life, they said to me, you know what's cool? Is they, they met me and I'm exactly the same in real life than what I show you online. Best compliment ever, and that's something I couldn't advise highly enough for most of you. Because I can go out there and there's very, very, very average photographers who's building massive names for themselves because they're baffled with bullshit. They're making, they're good on the creative and they're building a name for themselves, but you meet them in real life, they, they have the personality and drive of a bread plank. You see? Now, same with safari companies. Let's say John. Think John. John opens a safari company. He has a little safari company in, let's call it Bloemfontein, small little, well, town in the free state in South Africa. He is very good with the creative and he posts videos and images of how he's running worldwide trips, even though he's been to Canada once. If he's good enough with his narrative, people will believe him. Yes, now they're gonna approach him to give them what he said they could give them, but it's not real. He's baffling them with bullshit. You need to keep it real because if someone calls you on it, if they approach you wanting the thing that you said you could do or give them, but it's not possible, you're gonna look like the idiot and you're disappointing someone else there. It's just that easy. I think the, the bottom line for me when it comes to, and this is both Instagram story and Instagram feed, is would you do it in the real world? Yes? So 
there's people, I mean, the fitness influencers is just fascinating to watch. It's, uh, it, it's whatever. But the thing these people do, there's ass everywhere, there's bodies everywhere, they pose in the strangest places. You think, okay, cool, you're putting this on here to get my attention, but is that really you? Would you do that? So the question for you as a wildlife photographer, as someone trying to sell prints, sell safaris, build a brand, build a reputation, is ask yourself, anything you put out, would you say or show that in the real world? Because if you won't, why are you doing it online? I don't get it. Anyway, let's go from the top here. So if you're trying to create a proper wildlife photography feed uh, for Instagram, the first thing you need to look at, and this is super interesting, is your bio. Click through to your bio and look. Your image, your profile picture. Are you showing people who you are? A nice close-up of who you are. Because remember, it's human, right? So show me your face. Don't show me some abstract or some meme or whatever. Because off the bat, I'm not taking you seriously, right? So as a wildlife photographer, if you're trying to sell me a print, I'm not going to buy a print from your camera. I'm going to buy a print from a human. So your bio and your profile picture, important. Show me your face. Show me who you are. In your bio, tell me off the bat what you want to do, who you are, and what I can expect from you. There is a lot of people out there who's trying to sell prints. An immense amount of people trying to sell prints, right? Hello, Al. Um, but they don't say so up front. They try and bullshit you at the bottom of every post by saying, if you want my prints, please DM me. I have a special of 5% off until Christmas, right? They don't lead in the top of their profile with, I sell wildlife prints. Well, why try and hide it? Right? Because if you're going to try and sell at me after every post, here's my favorite, is people trying to sell safaris, right? So in their profile, they'll have, I'm the owner of Wild Eye and blah, 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 not us, other people. And then at the bottom of every single post, it says, dear me, if you'd like to join me for a safari like this. Me, as the consumer, as the people who's consuming your content, I'm going to switch off after a while. Because I know that every single thing that you are putting out is aimed and then you sell on each one. I don't want to be sold to all the time. When I go on here, if I'm looking for something specific, sure, I'm looking to buy, I will go and find you. If I right now want to, for example, buy, I don't know, mobility bands from a fitness point of view, I know where to go. I'm going to go to the person on here immediately who adds the most value, who I find the most interesting. I'm not going to go to the one that puts sale after sale after sale after sale after comment, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go to the person who's added the most value. So in your bio, tell me upfront what you're going to do and then execute against that. It's vitally important. Now, and I think a lot of these questions will, will answer it, but posting, what, when, how, you need to stay real to you. And here's the thing as photographers, and this is something that I've spoken to a couple of people to about in the last while. Ego is a problem. Because whether you like it or not, you are currently worrying about how many likes and followers you are getting. I promise you this, and this to me, and this happened to me personally, August, September last year, I took a complete break, 100%, went to Turkey, went offline completely. Big reassessment for me, big growth curve, and coming back, I, and I mean this in the best possible way, I couldn't give a flying fuck how many followers I have. You know why? Because if that is your end goal, you are going to lose every single time. Now, as a photographer, we get very emotional about our images. We get like, oh man, this one only got 200 likes. I know of photographers, wildlife, and some of you will know them, who will post an image on their feed they will check back half an hour later, it hasn't got enough likes, they'll delete it and post it again in order to get more likes. You've got to be kidding. Guys, the moment you move past worrying about how many followers you have, you're going to start winning. And you're going to start posting content for you. And here's the thing, you might lose 1,342 followers, but the five that you are going to get are the ones that really care what you have to say. And I will take five over 1,432 any day of the week. I lost when I came back from Turkey and I started posting different because I was over trying to post for the audience. I want my audience to enjoy the content that I put out. I want my audience 
to find value in the content I put out. I'm not going to put out anything just for the sake of getting followers. And there's many ways in which wildlife photographers do this. Post something bloody. Post a lion with a zebra skull hanging out of its mouth because you will get likes and you will get engagement, right? Does that mean people are a step closer to buying your product or your service or to following? No, because there are hubs. There are photography hubs out there, many. Instagram wildlife or wildlife of Instagram and world hub or whatever. They just repost. These guys, what they do, they repost the controversial images. They build it up to three, four million followers, then they sell the account. That's their end goal. People just go, they double tap and move on. I've seen people, even on outer strips, they'll go on Instagram, right? So they'll sit and they'll open Instagram, scroll, double tap, scroll, double tap, scroll, literally just like every single post, right? Because it's the right thing to do? No. You see, I think the moment you figure out, again, why you follow, why you post, but also you need to know your end goal. That will make what you post so much more interesting. But ego, ego needs to go. It needs to, because the longer you hold on to, oh, my followers and stuff, you're missing out on so much else. It's just unbelievable. Now, the funny thing, and this is, this is kind of a relevant thing right now, if you follow social media people online, is everybody wants to be an influencer in their industry, right? So now, and I did, some of you asked me questions here, which I'll get to later. I quickly went to some of your feeds and you said, I want more followers, I want more followers. Right, but now watch this. Some of you have like in the hundreds, let's say six, 700 people. And hey, don't diss it. Do not diss that because people think, oh, Jerry, you've got like 60, whatever thousand followers. That's amazing. I want it. Okay, John, Tim, right? You have 749 followers. Let me see you put those 749 people in a big room or auditorium and you now go and talk to them. You stand on a stage and talk to them. You're going to shut your pants because it's actually a lot of people, right? 749 followers, Tim, right? You can then take one of your images and say, hey, everybody, this is my image. Look at what I've done. 700 is a lot of people. 50 is a lot of people, right? Don't get stuck in the, in, in the followers. But some of you now have three, four, five hundred followers. You say, I want more, I want more. Yet, if I look at the comments on your feed, you're not even engaging with your two, three hundred, but now you want two, three thousand. Why? So you want to be a brand and you want to be an influencer, but you're not even taking the time to be nice and engage and thank and work with your current audience, regardless of how big it is. Why do you want the numbers? Again, why are you posting? Reverse engineer it back and you'll win. Now, the interesting thing that's happened and a little while ago is Snapchat came onto the scene. What's it? I don't know, two, three years. I jumped immediately because I like the idea of being able to get short stories out and kind of do that. Instagram, as you know, they stole everything from them and arguably did it better. But you now have in one app, let's forget about that direct messaging and the live side of it. You have your feed and your story. Now, why are some of you thinking that I can be very professional on my, my feed, which is the business side of it, I'm posting amazing wildlife images and I'm posting beautiful videos and all kinds of content about come on safari with me or buy my prints, but on your story, you act like a complete fucking hooligan. So <laughs> it's the same thing, it's part of your brand. Now you need to understand the way that people consume these things. It'll make you understand better where to post. Should you post an image on your feed? Yes. Should you post behind the scenes stuff on your story? Yes. But let's think about this for a second. Right now, I'm getting more engagement and more views on my story. Why? Because it's front and center. People open Instagram, it's at the top, it's right there. They watch it, they might flick through, but you have their attention. So, and we're gonna talk about this now, the variables in the creative. Right? So if you do good stories, people will watch it. You should also now start changing. You should be posting behind the scenes, short video clips on your feed because it stays there. And in order to get people's attention to your Instagram story, where the, the attention is shifting big time in that direction, put some, and please, I mean, don't do just wallpapers. Oh yeah, click to the next one, scrap my wallpaper. That's cool. 
Just say, guys, here's some nice images and just scroll them. Even if it's like this, so if that's my screen, even if it's just that, post the images on there because you want people's attention if you want to tell them something or share something or make a point or sell a print or sell a safari. It's about attention. So think about how you use your Instagram story versus your Instagram feed. Now, before we get to the questions, one more question here. And the thing that I said to my guys is, we need to look at more pillar content. What is a pillar content? I.e., a video on YouTube, a podcast, a blog on your own website. Why? What happened? Have you, you guys have seen Avengers, yes? Thanos, snap of the finger and half the world disappears. What if Instagram, if Thanos came and he did this and Instagram goes away today? Most of you will have zero attention and zero chance of sharing your message because you are doubling down on it. You should not be spending most of your time creating content just for one platform because you're going to lose. It's a fact. People thought MySpace was gonna last forever. It's gone, all right? Into it. Facebook was everything, and it still is the biggest. People's attention's gone away from there. People drift, whatever the new thing is. So, pillar content. So, for example, this podcast, this video, that's a pillar piece of content. I can spin off of this for a week without having to produce anything specifically for Instagram. I could do a short video clip and place it on Instagram. I can do the cover page and post it on Instagram, but it takes me somewhere. Pillar content, guys, very, 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 very few, if any of you in the wildlife photography and safari game is producing any pillar content, video content, audio content, written word, that, if Instagram disappears, where does it leave you? So, just some ideas, just some thoughts on, um, on social media, and I just, the, the amount of copying that's going on, and again, it comes back to being real. People will look what I'm doing, they look at what the guys at Wild Eye's doing, they copy that, right? So they copy that, and they put it out as their own. People might, let's say, see, don't see through the bullshit, they follow them, they go on a trip with them, they realize, oh shit, this is not the real thing, why are you not what I saw online? Copying an idea, I'm all for, but make it your own. And make sure that if it's your own, if someone meets you in the real world, it is still you. Because that's important. Right, let's get to some of these questions. There's a whole bunch and we'll run through them. And um, again, these are all, I just printed them off there. There might have been a few new ones, but I think in here, it'll recap some of what we've done and also um, might give you some more food for food. So, Mikey Brown, landscape versus portrait photos for Instagram. Think about this. The biggest size you can do as a portrait is four by five orientation. And then I think you can go to 16 by nine landscape. With the way that people scroll through their feeds, like this, right, very quick, it's literally like this. I like to go portrait four by five because it gives me the most real estate on the screen. So if I'm scriping and your image is this fast, this small, it's very easy just to scroll past it. But if it's a proper big one and it fills the screen, hopefully more attention. So mix it up, don't get stuck on one, but for me, I prefer portrait because of the way and the real estate it gives me on screen. Um, landscape, that's done. How do you grow your profile without using the follower for follower mentality? Easy, add value and be human, right? Give me a reason to come and follow you. Give me a reason to come to your page and to read your captions and to follow your story. If you add value, now I've said this in the past, there's two ways, educate and entertain. Now, you think, oh, but I can't teach and I'm not funny. I'm not saying you're gonna tell a fucking joke, right? I'm saying, if I'm sitting here in Johannesburg, four ways at the design quarter, second floor in the Wild Eye office, if I post an image, and I did, actually go and check my feed, I post an image of a leopard, right? Most people just post the image of a leopard. I went deep in the caption, and side note, you guys are doing two short captions. Go deeper on the captions because people actually read it and it matters. Um, and in the caption, I taught someone something. If you look at this, that might happen. Look at the ear of the animal and so on. Education could be me posting an image of an elephant and in the caption saying, gestation 22 months, they're very common in this, this, and this area. Someone sitting in San Francisco, they were just educated. They don't know anything about it. Tell me what you know. Entertainment. If I just post on a Friday, I post a funny Friday wildlife or whatever it might be of two cubs playing, right? I've just entertained someone sitting in the middle of London, UK, right? Because I've shown them something different. 
So entertain and educate is a part for me of adding value. So how do you grow your profile? Be valuable and be human. And then you need to post quite regularly as well, but we'll get to that. Right. Wandering Canadian 93 says, can putting your camera down and enjoying your moment help your photography? Now, it's not really relevant to this discussion, but yes, 100%. I've said this in previous podcasts, put your camera down, look at the stuff. The more you look at it, the more you'll see what you want to photograph. When you pick up your camera, it'll be better again. Moving on. Um, again, Keegan's photography. How can I improve my photography account? Be valuable, be human, and let's add, be consistent. One of the things I told my guys, and I think I'm, I'm very proud of this, the way we're doing this, is people are not going to travel, because I'm in the travel game, they're not gonna travel with a wildlife image. They're gonna travel with a person. So if you are just posting image after image after image, regardless of how good it is, people don't know who you are. So people will not buy from a wildlife image, they'll buy from a person. They won't travel with a wildlife image, they'll travel with a person. Keep that in mind. How can I improve my photography account? Be valuable, be human, be consistent. Done. Um, Lindsay says, what exactly do you, uh, do you mean when you say there's a lot of people out there baffling you with bullshit? So I mentioned that earlier on, but just again, there's companies out there who say, oh, we run trips worldwide and this is what we do and we're amazing. Um, if you look at it from outside and you just look at what gets presented, it looks like, ah, oh, that's amazing. That's all over the place. But if you dig deeper, and digging deeper online is very, very valuable, you'll see that they outsource. We, as Wild Eye, will only put you on a trip, on a scheduled departure or a private guided trip, if you're accompanied and guided and hosted by a full-time employed wildlife staff. They're sitting in here. If you come to me and say, hey, Jerry, I would like to go on a wild eye trip to where? Uh, I don't know, um, um, what is, uh, Papua New Guinea, right? I say, fucking done, I'm gonna book you a wild eye trip to Papua New Guinea, but I then find an operator there and I outsource you to them, you're not actually on a wild eye trip anymore, I just took your money. I was just an, a middleman. So baffling with smoke and mirrors is very, very easy online about how well your business is doing, how much weight you've lost on the fitness thing. It's very easy and it's very common, unfortunately. Dan Little Junior Photography, gaining followers. Stop worrying about it. Be valuable, attract a tribe of people who believe in you, regardless if it's 200 or 20,000. Stop worrying about followers. Rather worry about the content you create and the value you're adding. It's just, I sound like a parrot. It's again and again the same thing. Snap on Safari, how do you develop a style, style of processing? Lots of photographers I like have one. Again, not really relevant to this discussion, but you can very easily create an Instagram account that has a certain style, right? And you can only show that, which will build your style. For me, from a style point of view, I've said this way back in some videos, but I think a style and a rut is very, very similar because it changes. If I look back two years ago to what I was shooting, I had a certain style then. Before then, I was trying different things. I had a different style then. <laughs> More photography based, but let's do this. Some people start shooting these high key images, overexposed by two stops, put it in Nitrum, pull the blacks down, you've got an amazingly fine art print immediately. And they do everything like that and they call it a style. Yeah, but that's my style, this is what I do. Uh, no, no, Sarah, you're actually in a rut because you're trying to force all the square holes, square pegs, into round holes all the time. So, not a style. For me personally, I think a style evolves. I think a photographic style is not something you should chase. I think it's something, and maybe this is a, a discussion for a future podcast, I think it's something that finds you and that you execute against. But for me personally, the day that I put down my camera is the day I can look back and say, that was my style of photography. Yes, a lot of photographers have a certain look and a feel, but they're choosing that to present to me, right? Whether they're chasing that or not, that's up to each individual. But I think if you are not at the top level of your game, if you are still growing and learning, I would urge you not to try and photograph a certain style until you've tried everything. I think you're gonna miss some cool stuff along the way. Right, uh, Laura, I've gradually built up a following of nearly 3,000 people, but I'm struggling to get more. Now, 
Laura, we've kind of touched on this. I checked your feed. You do respond to every comment, which is amazing. And you've got wonderful photography. I think two things. Number one, I think the world is getting oversaturated. The, the Instagram world is getting oversaturated. If you're just posting images, it's very difficult to stand out. You need to include videos. You need to include captions. You know what's winning? Nice image wildlife. Drop the opacity. Put a quote over it. Or something as simple as take an image, drop the opacity, put the EXIF info over, and on your next post, post the image or vice versa. But I think you need to mix it up. You need to keep, keep people guessing as to what they're going to find when they come to your feed. What are they going to see? If they know they're going to get cool wildlife, it's kind of predictable. So again, I think it's consistency. It's both quality and quantity, but it's mixing it up. Don't just post images. Post other stuff, videos, even a selfie once in a while. Like if you're packing your camera bag. Even if you're not a selfie person, why? Because it makes you human. Take a picture, selfie, hey, look, it's my camera bag, right? And post it out. Mix it up, but then as a, as a kind of a foundation or a kind of full stop after that, don't worry about the followers. 3,000 people is a shitload. I know you want to do courses. You should be able to get 3,000. Out of 3,000, you should be able to sell courses if you're valuable enough. You have to add value, guys. It's something not many people are doing, and it really is where it's at. Right. Let me scroll on, next page. Uh, Starbuck Photography. Do you recommend selling wildlife photography photos? If so, how? Um, I don't know. Uh, do you recommend I have pizza for dinner? No, I'm being facetious. Um, do you want to sell images? It's hard work. If you want to, absolutely, it's worth it. I mean, I can't tell you, but how is, you need to do a couple of things. Number one, show me you have good images. Number two, and this is important if you want to sell prints, give it away for free. I don't sell prints, I stay in my lane, right? My lane is travel, guiding, photography, experience. I could sell prints because once in a while I do a free print giveaway on Instagram. Christmas, uh, middle of the year, whatever. maybe it's time for another one. I give my prints away, let people print it and do whatever the hell they want with it, right? I've done my bit. The amount of inquiries I get for print sales after giving something away for free is ridiculous. What do I do? I just keep in giving it away for free. Guys, if you want one of my prints, just ask. I'll send it to you. Simple as that. But for you, Starbuck, if you want to sell photos, show me first you've got something decent to sell. That's by creating a profile and sharing your images along with why you're doing what you're doing and how you're creating them. Then give some away for free. You'll be surprised what happens, I think. Callum, how can I create more conservation-related content? Uh, just do it. Just do it. Post an image of yours and write something conservation related. <laughs> Take an image from, I don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio who posts a lot of that stuff. Reshare it. Add your own comments to it. Just do it. It's, it's, nobody's, there is no more gatekeepers, guys. In the old days, you had to get through a, a magazine publisher or someone to get your stuff seen. The gatekeepers are gone. Callum, if you want to create wildlife photography or conservation related content, just do it. The variables in the creative but just do it. Simple as that. Callum's got two more here, but they're interesting. How would I keep generating uh, engaging content if you don't travel as often as Marlon or myself? My content is not predicated on me traveling, right? You should be able to, and with whatever images you have, you can post sunrises, sunsets. Ooh, but wait, that breaks the ego because it's not going to get much likes on Instagram. Screw it. You're posting content. You, you're putting stuff out there. Um, so... Just be creative. Put stuff out there. That's what it's about. Um, is it possible to have an impact with lower followers? Yes. Add value. You have to add value. That's where it's at. What photos work for social media? Because some work. You should not be asking that. You should be asking, what do I want to create and reverse engineer it? And that's what you put out. Let the people decide for themselves. You just keep on creating new stuff. The stuff that does work, in case you really want to know, bright and colorful, cute and cuddly, things dying on wildlife photography. It's really that simple, right? How relevant is it to pro photographers, given the limiting size of photos? 100% relevant. You have to be out there in order. Whatever your goal is, you're trying to sell assignments. Why do you think all the top, Paul Nicklin, all of those guys, are on Instagram? Because they can share their message, they can share their images, they can share their story. It's very relevant, not just for pro wildlife photographers, for beginner, intermediate, and pro, and everybody else.
you have to be on there. If you want the attention for your work and you want to try and make a difference, you have to be out there. Um, on Instagram, how can you increase more engagement and growth with your posts? I shouldn't even answer that. Be human, be valuable, be consistent. Simple as that. Guys, I think that's about it for now. Um, just cut all of it down. Why do you post? Why do you follow? Be valuable, be consistent, and be human. And most importantly, stop worrying about how many followers, likes you have. It's not important. What is important is that number one, you enjoy the journey. Number two, people enjoy the journey with you. And uh, number three, just have fun with it, I think. It's, that's what it's about. If you guys have any other questions, send them through. I'm on all the social media platforms. Jerry Van Vault, my email is jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at wild with a hyphen, E-Y-E, dot C-O dot Z-A. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. The podcast, I'm off to the UK and the US next week. So I'm going to try and do some from there. But um, we're in the 200s. I can't thank you guys enough. It is um, amazing to have the feedback and the engagement. I enjoy it. I hope you guys too. Truly appreciate your time. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Chat to you guys next time.